And we're back, and I saved you all the walk here. Never been here before. I mean, I guess we were in the extra chapter, but... Never been here in a real game. Or, like, the real part of a game. What's that thing in the middle? You have, and, uh... I'm pretty sure that this is, like, a main area in Sachiko's birthday bash. So? まえ Hello? Okay. Froze for a second. Soft cream pokne? Emoto ga skide yo. Eh? Kishinuma kun no emoto san te soft cream ski nanda. What is this? Eh, sorry, koso fuyu de mo kuita garu gura de yo. Miteru kochi ga samu kunaru de. What? I mean, I know she thought he was going to say it looks like a big piece of poo, but... Why? What's crazy about that? I mean, I don't see her doing it, but... Well, if you're gonna go wrap around it, then it's fine. Oh, okay. Oh, that's I wasn't sure I liked this idea, and my expression made those misgivings blatantly clear to Kashinima. And I have a massive sun glare on my screen right now because my window is open. So that's exciting. You could easily climb up there. Oh my god, they actually animated it. I'm surprised they animated that. Alright, well, let's wrap around here. So I have two votes for Outer Worlds so far over Sachiko's birthday party. That's cool. I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting the opposite. Oh my god, she's fallen off. She's completely off of it, but I'm still up here, don't worry. That was loud. Shinima looked up at me, but quickly divided his, uh, his eyes when he realized he could easily see up my skirt. All oh, right, easy. Easy joke to make. <laughs> Let out a loud shriek, grabbing Kashinima's attention. Not that it mattered, given our relative positions. Oh. Yoshiki didn't see that? All of a sudden I was surrounded by body parts with hands and strands of hair comprising the bulk of them.
This is the kind of music I would expect to hear in a YouTube poop. Oh, wait, I was supposed to read that. And then from out of the blue, sickingly cheerful carnival music began blaring over the- Oh my god, it's so loud. Over the gym's loudspeakers, volume up so high as to unpleasantly distort the sound. It was almost like an old record playing from a phonograph coupled with the corpses now littering my path. The music was even more unsettling than it would have been to begin with. I was quickly losing my footing as the formerly solid pillar began to break down to a porous, almost sand-like substance. Just jump off the side! Oh, what the hell? Goodbye. Sand began to pour into my mouth, mouth and nose, immediately preventing me from saying another word, or more importantly, breathing. The more I tried to resist, the more the pillar pulled me in. Nuch, buch. Gulf. The sand was now in my eyes, and it felt like it was seeping into my skull from there. The pain was absolutely unbearable. Ng. The weight of the material pushing against me quickly began cracking my ribs and collapsing my lungs. There was no escape anymore. I was already gone. Ugh. Mm. Alright, that was, a. Uh... Well, it was better than the other ones. What was I supposed to do? Was I just supposed to jump off? I think, like, that's the smart thing to do there, so that's what I'm assuming I was supposed to do. Oh, Jesus, we're all the way back here. Uh, well, I guess I'll just edit this out. I guess I should do some more youtube -y stuff, like, check out my Twitter. I post there, like, once a month, or sometimes once a week. The link's in the description. If I forget to put it there, then it's on my channel banner. Yeah, that's what YouTubers are supposed to say, right? Shinema grabbed onto my arm and pull, tried to pull me free from the object. I probably don't have to talk louder, but I'm going to anyway, because it's the only way I can hear my own voice. But within its depths, there was a little girl with black eyes, and she was staring right at us. Oh. The sight was unnerving, but he didn't flinch for long. He continued pulling desperately, trying to free me from becoming part of the pillar's makeup. Awful. Oh, okay. Kisaki Academy, Class 2-9, just prior to morning homeroom. I entered the classroom, school bag in hand, and beeline directly for Naomi. From the look on her face, she'd been waiting for me. Naomi. Oh, oh my god, the music cut out at an appropriate time. Now Mew shook her head. Oh, this music. Look at it. Look at the music guy go. Putting music in the right place. 
her voice quiver, no doubt memories of our time in Heavenly House were resurfacing for her just as they had been for me. And my news was no better, unfortunately. Now me and her face completely buried in her hands at this point. Yes, it should. In my worry, I did what I often do when trying to clear my mind and looked out the window, staring into the cloudy sky. And suddenly there it was again. There was a solid black spherical object hovering in the sky. Please refrain from looking outside during school hours. What? <clears throat> Our homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, entered the classroom with his usual air of authority. Even if even the teacher was startled by this, it must be juicy, or so all the other students seemed to think as they began to murmur noisily and get up from to see for themselves. Didn't she just say no, not God? Isn't God like Kamisama? What? He's really quiet. Now me and I looked one another in the eye. Can't look at each other in the eyes, because she only has one. We are both thinking the same thing. After class has ended, we took a trip to Polonia Academy High School. We needed something to go on, some kind of clue, anything at all really, so we just started asking around. Eventually we encountered a girl, a girl who was crying profusely about some friends of hers who had gone missing. The entire time Mio spoke with us, she was trying to rub the tears from her eyes, and each time she attempted it, it made her ponytail twitch. We pledged after our escape not to burden others unnecessarily with information about Heavenly Host, feeling that most people were simply better off not knowing. <laughs> Uh, 
私なんかが聞いても何もできないのは分かっていますだからお願いですみんなを助けてください、oh, a little late for that she was actually grabbing my shirt now and the tears were pouring from her eyes all over again みんな苦しんでる yeah Aiko Neo, the girl we'd met at Makina Shinozaki's apartment. She seemed calm and confident, even a little full of herself, but somewhere deep down I felt there was a chink in her armor, and I think Naomi had felt it too. Mio rubbed her eyes again, her ponytail perking up once more, and looked at us with big wet saucers. Out of options, we elected to retry the Sachiko and the Ever After ritual. And that was our method of ingress into Heavenly Host last time, after all. With Proxy Doll in hand and my bag of supplies at the ready, the two of us yanked our arms back as hard as we could, splitting the paper in two so that we each held a piece. Okay. No, it shouldn't. Patted my bag as if demonstrating to Naomi how much was in it. It should have been fairly obvious, though, as the bag itself was particularly bursting at the seams. Helicopters flew by overhead, no doubt in response to the mysterious black orb that appeared in our sky. We watched the flurry of activity above us as we glumly left Polonia Academy High School no closer to any answers than we were before. Glancing over at Naomi, I saw the sour expression on her face and tried to imagine why she didn't want to go back home, and it wasn't hard to think for n of numerous reasons. Naomi. <laughs> Her expression instantly measurably brightened. We shifted directions to the exact same spots we were standing at before, and began the relatively short f foot trek to my house. It was an ordinary and rather pleasant walk for a while, until Naomi caught sight of her mother turning the corner up ahead at the same time I didn't realize that's who it was. She was clasping the arm of a young man sporting a shaved head in a construction outfit with some sort of insignia emblazoned on the back of his uniform. She was clearly very close to this man, cuddling up to him as they walked, pulling his arm into her bosom and even sneaking a few kisses before the pair disappeared down an alleyway. Her voice had gone up a full octave as she said this. Clearly something was indeed bothering her, but I had no way to know what it was in the moment and could only take her at her word. And her word was by all appearances, by all appearances that everything was fine. She'd bit more or less closed herself off outwardly, pretending not to have seen a thing. As we drew closer to my house, we slowly began to see a strange light illuminating the area around it. And that area was different than what it looked like this morning, to say the least. There was now a bamboo wall surrounding my home, and most notably, we now had a hot spring. Are? What words are there for situations like this? Flummoxed, maybe? Immediately upon opening my front door, however, we were greeted by a sign reading this way to the natural springs. Huh? Uh, we entered the dressing room only to find Yuka naked. Yuka! Yuka was holding a toy goldfish, a towel, and a small beach ball in her hands. 
That's not the question I should have asked, but I was in too much shock for my words to come out the way I meant them to. Yuka didn't seem to mind. She just smiled back at me as joyful as I'd have ever seen her. Grabbing one of each of our hands, she slid open the glass door in the back and led us into the Mochita Springs proper that we'd just been hearing so much about. Oh, that's, um, Satsuki. She's from birth Sachiko's birthday bash, too. I know that. There was another girl already soaking in the springs. A young girl around Yuka's age sporting a stylish hairdo. Is that what you'd call that? Okay. Are we, are we playing Sach Are we playing Sachiko's birthday bash right now? That's what it feels like. There's stuff like this in it, I know that much. Which is why I'm hesitant to play it. It was official. Nothing made any sense anymore. Naomi had grabbed hold of my shoulders as if to keep me upright in case I'd suddenly decided to faint, which in which all things considered was probably a sensible precaution. Well, that's not going to be the CG. What? I pointed my finger at her in an accusatory manner, as was the style at the time. Suddenly I found myself shuddering down to my core as my mom appeared us before us wearing nothing but a bath towel. Her skin was bright pink and she seemed to be in very high spirits. By the looks of things, she was in the spring herself until just moments before we arrived when she had evidently stepped out to the kitchen to get a very large number of beverages. <laughs> Mom. Yuka and Satsuki were also in very high spirits. <laughs> Do they not know that there's a giant black orb? Hazel's Miss Quone. Jesus. Okay. Now me and I were forced into the frame as well, like it or not. We are now a oh, whoops, sorry. We are now a party to this madness. That's not the CG. I'm gonna use the black orb as the CG. I'm still gonna call the episode Hot Springs because I can't believe this is happening, but okay. Our eyes were basically pinpricks at this point. None of this seemed even remotely real, and neither Naomi nor I had any idea how to react to it. I took the drink my mom handed me, and without even checking what it was, I chugged down a few gulps. I was thirstier than I thought, apparently. There was a white, thick liquid inside the milk bottle I was given. It had a faint tint to it when I viewed under the right light, but like the flavor, I couldn't quite identify it. I turned the bottle to read the label. Apparently it was Niwa flavored. この旅はこんなに素敵な温泉を作っていただきありがとうございます。もういつでも入りに来てくださいね。あ、これうちの鍵です。あら、ありがとうございます、お母様。母さん。でも本当にいいんですか？もちろん、持田の湯を作ってくださったのは先生なんですから、年間フリーパスですわ。Oh, just one year. 
What the hell was all of that? That night, I found myself tossing and turning in my futon. I just couldn't get to sleep for the life of me, so I tossed the covers aside and got up. <sighs> this had been the craziest day I could recall in this world, anyway. After all the commotion had died down and our many guests had departed, Dad had come home and predictably was in the springs right away with a... A what? A carafe? A carafe? Of his favorite sake. I had a hard time justifying Miss Cohen's arbitrary actions, not to mention my family's utter willingness to accept them, but in the end I had to admit the hot springs was pretty nice. Well, that's not fair. We don't get a shot of Satoshi, a, a CG of Satoshi in the hot springs. The rest of my fam- Oh, my mic. The rest of my family was all still sleeping, so the house was dead silent. I took off- Oh, well, we still might. I took off my clothes in the dressing room and slid open the glass door, and there, sitting on the edge of the spring, completely uncovered, was Miss Kwon. Oh. Oh, look at those ribs. Jeez. My face instantly turned bright red. She was a fairly attractive woman, after all, so being alone with her like this was kind of exciting. Okay, then. Though looking at her now, entirely exposed as she was, revealed to me that this shapely woman wasn't quite as shapely as I'd assumed. Her body was abnormally, worryingly thin. She was the definition of gaunt, looking every bit the part of an infirmed elderly woman from the neck down. I could have sworn I caught a slight glint from the corners of her eyes. She didn't seem to notice me, so I was half tempted to slide the door closed and pretend none of this had ever happened, but I had to come clean. What? <laughs> Despite the fact that I was a much younger man, and much younger, you're like, how old is she? She was 23, you're probably 16. I don't think that's much younger. My parents are 12 years apart. Despite the fact that I was a much younger man and her student, no less, she made absolutely no effort to hide her nakedness. In fact, she actually seemed a little excited to be seen this way. いえ、そんなことはじゃなくて。ナオミはどうしてるんですか? <笑> was legitimately relieved. But I was also having trouble concentrating on the conversation. It took every ounce of focus I had to avert my eyes from the things I knew I shouldn't be staring at. Okay. Oh, no, sensei. Kakushite yo. Hmm? Ah, sokka. Gomen ne? She immediately got up from her spot and dunked herself in the water up to her neck due to its mineral content. This was a very effective means of at least partially obscuring her body. Ne? Satoshi kun koso. I panicked at the realization that I too was completely naked right now. Covered. <coughs> Sorry, I hiccup. I covered myself with my hands and could feel the blood rushing to my face, turning me what I was quite certain must have been an incredible shade of red. What is that look? Recovering as best as I could from that embarrassment, I stepped into the water, clo choosing my spot carefully as to put some distance between myself and Miss Kwon. ねえ、先生。どうしてこんなこと知りたいのは理由かなそれとも私の素性えっと。Both would be nice, I thought. 理由はね、守りたいから。
それで守るって何からそういえば私の素性ってクラスのみんなには話していなかったっけえええまあ私ね、以前はとある企業の会社役員だったんだけど会長になった後、どうしても諦めきれなかった昔からの夢だった教師になったの企業の会長だからこんなに資金力があるのかあの飲み物もそれじゃあ先生の会社の庭味庭味ってええ、うちの商品よゆかちゃんみたいに牛乳かヨーグルトかフルーツ牛乳かコーヒー牛乳か迷っちゃう子が全部の味を楽しめるようにって作ったのはあなるほど That response right there is pretty much how I've been reacting to this whole episode ねこれで悩みも解決でしょ<笑>先生の考え方って理にかなってて正しいのかもしれないけど発想が前のめりすぎだよなあスクラッチマイハッどうしたのああえっああいやカレーのことを思い出してましたカレー She seemed genuinely confused I guess to her the idea of Feeding me pre chewed curry was just another stroke of brilliance, maybe. Not at all something that might keep a poor high school boy like myself up at night. It said she was 23 earlier. I really wanted to know, but couldn't bring myself to ask something so rude of a lady, even if I'm sure she wouldn't have minded. The more I thought about it, though, the more intrigued I was by this enigma, I began shiftily turning my gaze towards her in short intervals, examining her body for clues. Her face had the texture and hue of a woman in her early 20s, but her body was another story. All of her skin was as smooth and beautifully toned as that of her face, but there was so little behind it, ribs fully exposed in every detail. Even down towards her abdomen, which up, I thought the water was obscuring, I could make out round indentations where her internal organs were practically jutting out. There was no muscle, no fat, just skin and bones, literally. Her proportions just didn't match up with one another. She was like a con construct built out of spare parts. I felt almost as if this person standing before me weren't even entirely human. Miss <laughs> Quinn suddenly let out a mischievous giggle. Crap, did she catch me staring? What is this? 私ね、君たちの副担任になった初日のこと忘れられないの My memory there was obviously a lot different from hers Kuo Niwa wasn't even a part of it The TA who showed up that day in my mind was and always would be Yui Shishido I can still vividly remember her tripping up the step to the teacher's desk and tearing her skirt She had to hold the rear of it together with a safety pin for the entire day And even though we were now living in a different reality, a world without Miss Yui, Shinohara, Susumoto, or Morishige, we had no memories of the alternate events from this existence. Oh, hi. My mind went completely blank, my eyes were swimming in my head, and I couldn't even see straight from the heat of the water. I had to have misunderstood her. What is this? Miss Quon smiled wi widely, and her cheeks turned a rosy red hue. Honestly, I might use this for the thumbnail. I think this looks alright. But only for a split second, then she was back to looking wistful again. Pangs of undue guilt and dread began to well up inside me. I knew what the next word out of her mouth was going to be. That was so quiet. Miss Quon was almost like a mass of innocence as she spoke that single word. Her eyes locked onto mine and froze them solid. I couldn't look away. Yeah, I was dumbfounded. I immediately and very quickly got out of the bath and headed for the dressing room. This is all just too weird. 
I looked back at Miss Quona, and unsurprisingly, she seemed almost deflated. She was looking down at the water in a state of utter de 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 dejection. I turned to face her, still feeling a strange mix of guilt and awkwardness, but allowing the guilt to dominate for a moment. <laughs> After saying this, she closed her eyes and turned bright red, and I was pretty sure it wasn't from the heat. Despite her physique, she seemed like a schoolgirl in that moment. I began to waver in my convictions. I felt like I had to justify not returning her sentiment. She twitched a little at this. Had I gone too far, was I suppose, supposed to know more about her in this reality than I actually did? After the longest few seconds in recent memory, her head drooped and a look of absolute sadness washed over her face. I'd never seen her like this before. I didn't mean to hurt her, she had to have known that. But what she didn't know and what I couldn't really explain was that I'd only been a part of this reality for a very, very short time now, so I genuinely didn't know anything about her. I tried to think of a way to convey this to her, but my mind kept drawing blank, so it was all just too absurd, too fantastical, too plausible. She slowly turned her back to me. Part of me was relieved by her acceptance. I don't think that's acceptance. I think she's pretty miserable. I guess, but another part of me was still absolutely riddled with guilt. There was a moment of silence, then Miss Quone's white waterproof wrist wristwatch broke with a sudden loud beat. All the sadness in her expression gave way to surprise as the numbers on the watch's display, which I now realized hadn't changed this whole time, began counting down. I felt almost as if I'd been saved by the bell, so to speak, and forced a small laugh, hoping that this interruption might help me move the topic away from me. She smiled. There was something about this smile of hers that was strangely haunting and would come to leave a lasting impression on me. あの、<笑> Thank you for healing my friend's wounds in this strange new world. Is what I was trying to convey, and somewhere deep down, I think the sentiment got through. With that, she slowly and meticulously waded her way to the edge of the spring. At which point she stepped out of the water directly in front of me. Oh, and we don't even get a scene in here. What? It just suddenly cut back here. I guess that's the end of the part. I'm going to go save and see if there's an extra cutscene that plays on my way to the save room. Which save? I'm going to go to the one by the classroom because there always seems to be a ghost next to the infirmary. Well, okay, that was definitely a, a series of events that happened in the sequence. Oh my god, that stamina. Boom, 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 boom. That boom, 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 boom part, that's from um, the first game. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's from... When did that play? I think that played when it was the Sachiko's reveal, like that she was the murderer. This is new, but that part of the boom, 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 that's from, I think it was Sachiko's reveal. I recognize it. All right, well, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. 
uh, again, I'll leave comments for if you want to see Sachiko's birthday bash or Outer Worlds next. Of course, by the time I'm finished with Blood Drive, Outer Worlds is like all the hype around it. It's going to be dead, so it's not like it's going to make me more popular. Of course, that never stopped me before, but yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.